Hey guys, Solomon here. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play. Now, the first thing you see on Startup, that right there, probably scares the crap out of you. Oh shit, this game was made by Titus. I am totally screwed. No, actually that is not true. You see, this game was not developed by Titus. It was actually developed by ASCII Entertainment. All Titus actually did was release the game in North America. They were the publisher. So, that's the good news right there. This isn't some horrible game like Superman 64. But, it does have some problems all the same. And I will cover those when we get to them. So, this game was released in Japan November 26th, 1993. It was released in North America in February of 1994. And, when it was released in the European Union, um, that was on October 31st of 1994. Yeah, what an awesome Halloween treat that was. Sure gave a lot of people some scares, I'll say that much. So, one thing I will say is that we are getting a little bit of a roll call here at the beginning of the game, as you've been kind of seeing. We're getting a, the names of a lot of the major characters, and I'll try to give you faces later on to match up with most of these names. But, for now, we, um... Well, we'll get there when we do. So, here we go! Let's play Artie Lightfoot. So, all we have to do is press the start button. Now, as you can see, this game does have a password system, and I will point that out later when it's relevant, because the password system in this game is actually pretty interesting. I do like it. It's a hell lot better than a lot of the other password systems, and why did you just move on? No, go back to the title screen. I want to actually play the game. Right, let's start a game, then, shall we? So here we got the prologue. In the realm of Prism. And as you can see, it's basically just the introduction scene. So how do you like that? They basically just showed us the tutorial level. Alright, so here we are. I'm controlling Artie Lightfoot. And here's our little penguin pal, Peck. If you press the um, Y or the A buttons, you can throw Peck. And basically, he'll eat enemies and whatnot. And there's some other stuff Peck can do later on that are that's pretty interesting to show. So I'll try to do that later. So, as for Artie's controls, um, obviously the D-pad allows you to run around. Pressing the A button allows you, not the A button, the B button allows you to jump. For some reason I've got, like, Game Boy logic on the head or something. But, um, here's the thing that is the most interesting bit of Artie here. As you can see, I can't jump out of this pit. So, if I want to do a super bounce, I gotta jump in the air using B. And then, while I'm in the air, I gotta press and hold B. So as long as I'm holding B button down, Artie is in this little, like, Tigger stance or whatnot. And if I release it, he does a little Tigger bounce. So that's the thing to note about Artie right there, is that he has a little bit of an awkward super jump uh, pose going on here. So as you can see, there's also these little star things here. Um, you collect a hundred stars and you get an extra life. So it's basically coins from Mario. That's basically how you look at it. It's coins. Or rings if you want to play it Sonic style. So as you saw in the introduction, we can, uh, push this box. And, yeah. I, I honestly, if I haven't said it already, I'm really, it's really awkward to do the jump here, because when you first start up this game, unless you have the manual, you probably will not realize you have to hold down B. And trust me, this will come into play later, just how bad it is that you have to actually do that half the time. So here we got a bomb. You can pick it up using um, the Y button, and I think also the A button. It's basically the same buttons you use for Peck there. So we have a huge pit here, which we can't clear. And, well, this is where we get introduced to a little bit of a momentum issue in the game. Build up some momentum, you make the jump, and we fall down this hole. And apparently Peck can fly a little bit, that's awesome. And now we have some dragons here, and an odd tablet. Hooray! We found the odd tablet. Now we can go perform history or something. So now we get a little cutaway here to the villain of the game whose name is Visconti, not the little mole guy, the guy behind the curtain. So we climb out of our little hole here, and we go to visit our friends in the house here. So here we have the Elder, and our little friend there, Nina. And here we have some of the fastest uh, scrolling text I've seen 
in any game. Like, if I were to take the time to stop and read this, um, it would just scroll way too fast for me to do that. So, to just summarize it real quickly, basically, there's seven pieces of a rainbow or something. It got split up all over the world, and the tablet gives us five of the locations of those pieces. And before we can do anything, the town is on fire, so we're going to have to go off and see what we can do about that. So now we're actually going to be getting into actual an actual level, not just that really simple tutorial level, which really didn't even give us much of a tutorial. So, let's go. Alright, so here we have our first enemy. As you can see, it's a pretty cute little fish thing, which we can just eat with Peck here, so for the most part I'm going to be using Peck unless I um, otherwise don't want to. Oh! Shit! Okay, well now I'm going to have to use my actual ability to kill this guy. So as long as I'm ducking here, he can't hurt me, but here's the thing. you If you try to jump on this guy, it's not actually going to do anything. What you got to do, you got to hold down the B button while you're jumping on this guy, or else you get killed. Okay, that was just a really stupid example, because I'm being stupid with the controls. But yeah, that's what I mean. This is the one thing that really kind of makes the game a little hard, is that the controls are really hard to get used to. Whoop. But as I was saying, if you want to kill an enemy, um, if you don't have peck, your only way to kill them is to do a jump on them. But the jump only works if you are pressing and holding B when you do it. So basically, if you were to do a super jump on top of an enemy's head, that's how it works. So that's really kind of stupid, uh, actually, because it, based on Mario logic, you should just be able to jump on the enemies. You shouldn't have to actually super jump off their heads. Anyway, you'll see how stupid it gets later on. For now, let's look at this. We got a chest. So as you can see, we got some stars out of it. Normally, if you lose Peck, this is basically how you get Peck back. So, we got some stuff here. I think there was an enemy hidden in that cart there, because he apparently ate something. So, we got some more stars here. So, as you see there, I actually stomped on this enemy's head. I had to actually hold B, though, if you were paying attention, so there you go. And this is a checkpoint, I just keep passing over that. This is a checkpoint. Jump on the guy's head, and there you go. Checkpoint. Whoa! We got some bombs here, gotta run. This guy won't be able to hit you so long as you're... Whoa! Ah, oh, that's a cheap move. You throw one right in front of me instead. Now, you don't need to jump on this guy's head every time, and how are you still alive? Die, you. So yeah, basically everything respawns when you die. So just run. This guy will probably throw a bomb in front of us. No, he didn't this time. Got more stars here. Just eat that guy because he tried to throw bombs on my head here. Whoa! Giant mole guy. Stay up here on the roof and you're pretty much fine. Whoop. <laughs> Eat one of those guys before they jump in the well. Alright, we've got to jump after these guys. In the well. So, Nina and the Elder come over to wish us good luck. Here we are in the Grounder's Mind. Here we got another chest with more stars in it. Alright, we got conveyor belts. Yeah, that's always fun, isn't it? Jump over here and get some more stuff. An extra life, actually. That's nice. So there are actually chests in this game that contain extra lives. And it's actually very abusive when you have one close to a respawn point, as you will uh, eventually see. So here we got, like, a bucket carousel. Eat the enemy out of one of the buckets. And jump in. Alright, so we gotta jump from one bucket to the next, and as you see, there's spikes down there, so try not to fall in. Oh god, I fell! Okay, so I survived. Barely. 
Got a checkpoint here, so if we die, we'll just come back here. And we got a free-falling bucket. That's not good. And we need to jump out before we fall in the pit. So we got a chest here. We got Peck back. Jump on that guy so he doesn't cause any problems. Whoa! I hate these conveyor belts. Run all the way over here, and we can get an extra guy. Which I will probably be needing at some point. Jump across the conveyor belts, and we got another bucket. Ow, oh, bastard. Oh god. I really love how you at least have invincibility frames here. Imagine if the game didn't give you invincibility frames. Alright, so we got some of these guys jumping around here. Just eat them up with peck and you should be fine. Uh-oh. We got some of these guys flying around. Huh. Now as you see, some of these buckets are actually broken. So we're going to have to take a little bit of caution here. Because we're going to have some issues getting through here with all these flying enemies around. Okay, I guess it was just one flying enemy. Alright, I'll take that. So we get along this uh, little mine rail, mine rail here. Blech. And now we enter a tunnel chase scene. Alright, get in the cart. There we go. So... Um, you gotta be really careful because it's very easy to get knocked off this cart and basically fall to your death. Because if you fall off screen, or however you want to call it, you will die. Fortunately, this isn't a very long segment. In fact, now we got a little bit of an automated cutscene here now. So there you go. We're chasing this guy in a minecart. I think possibly you could jump into the other minecart when you're doing that little switchback thing there. In fact, the first time you play the game, that's probably your first instinct. And then that happens, and you're probably like, oh shit, I wasn't supposed to do that. I mean, I can't say that for sure, I never actually tried it, so... Uh, but look, it's giant spike mole face. So now we're here for the first boss fight. He's basically dropping these... Uh, blocks of earth on our face here. So we gotta super bounce him on the head and look for that open spot in the dirt. So you can duck under his helmet or you can jump over it, but the idea is that you just basically have to dodge his attacks and jump on his head like that. It's a pretty simple boss fight, but it's pretty easy to screw up because, well, as you noticed, I've already lost Peck. So if I take one more hit, I'm gonna lose a life. Like that. See, he was one hit away from death, and I screwed up at the very last second. And before you ask, no, you can't use that peck on this guy. Peck just goes right through him. It's really easy when these um, holes in the dirt appear, like, near the sides. It is possible to actually slip in between dirt blocks, but, well, it's really hard to do. But yeah, this is so far pretty easy. One hit away from death. Come on. Alright, we got this now. And duck underneath it, because I think you can still die on that. And now we got the first rainbow crystal. Hooray! So that's that then. Nina's still praying for us, and who the heck's this? Well, that is Don Jacoby, and he'll come into play a little later. For now, we're just wandering around the forest after blowing up a side of the, the side of the mountain or something. So here we have an elder, we have a nice apple tree, and some scale. And we have a bear and a mouse or something, and that's Cat Tree, who's, I want to say, one of the major characters, but she's only around for so many stages. And apparently she stole one of the rainbow jewels, so we better hurry and go after her then. In the Lumberjack Forest. Alright, so let's go. So now we get introduced to a few hammocks here. Um, a limited cliche, I'll say. 
So jump across the platforms here. Try not to uh, fall on the spikes. Now this is one thing I should mention right here. Is that I'm not holding the D-pad anymore when he falls straight down. He, this is where his controls get really rigid. Is that Artie will move pretty precisely with how you intend to move. So like... If you, uh, every little motion of the D-pad basically controls where he goes. It's full control in that sense, but it's really easy to screw up if you're used to, like, gaining momentum in midair, like with Mario, so... You gotta be really careful in midair. But as you can see, we got apples falling from the sky and trying to eat us. But if you have Peck, it's not too bad. Oh, oh he still got him. Yay! Alright, so now we get a helium tank, so if we try to use Peck now, we'll ride him like a little blimp. Hooray! Don't touch the spikes. So now we need to go up here. Jump on the hammock. Get more stars. And you don't actually have to hold down the jump button, you just need to, uh... You just need to jump on them. So I'm gonna ride um, my little friend here over, and he eventually runs out of helium. Oh well. So there's the checkpoint. Get some more stars because these are awesome for extra lives. And now we have a little hammock jumping segment, which is kind of the, in my opinion. See, it's really easy to miss the hammocks. Uh, make sure I get this one. There we go. All right, now here's a little bit of a bastard segment right here. Yeah, see, you gotta basically jump across all these enemies, but it's really just easier to take a hit and run across. It's really hard to pull this off. I've never pulled it off before. And there's one last bastard bit before we get out of this forest. We run down here, and there is a giant pit, which you can barely make. You have to be jumping right at the very edge, otherwise it doesn't work. So now I have to do all this over again. Because I couldn't make that one jump. Seriously, I honestly don't think you can get through that any other way than to lose Peck, and then just jump with the best of your damn ability at that very last bit. Oh crap! Ah, oh, almost made it! Oh, I almost made it. Okay, well, we gotta run down this hill and jump at the very edge. Ah, oh, I didn't make it. Damn it. Alright, we'll try this again. Fortunately, they give you so many stars here, it's very easy to uh, get some extra lives every fail or two. So, you know, the game's kind of forgiving. You'll get so many of these little star things here. And yet you'll still fall for that same little issue there, time and time again. So let's run down the hill again, and... JUMP! Ah, oh, seriously, they make that barely wide enough for you to not make, unless you have it perfect. It is seriously, you're gonna seriously lose a lot of lives on this, on this little bit right here. All because of those two jumps they expect you to do. Like, seriously, the, like I say, because of how... Ah, oh, crap. Because of how sensitive the controls are for Artie here, it's not like Mario, where, like, it's very easy to jump across enemies. It's... He's just a lot more sensitive than that, and it takes a lot of getting used to with this game's controls before you can actually pull something off like that, so... Oh, come on, I had the B button held down. Oh, crap, better get out before this invincibility wears off. Okay, good. Right, run down the hill, and jump! Ah, oh, I made it. And that was the end of the stage, too, so it's like they just throw that one jump in at the very end just to screw you over. It's bullshit. And there's Catry running off with that rainbow crystal. So now we're at the Tree Fortress. Oh, look, it's Don Jacoby. Oh, wait, Don J Jacoby. So anyway, now we have climbing vines here. So now we have to climb a tree, and as you can see, some of these rotate. For most of these, it's easy to... 
it's easiest to uh, have your super bounce enabled if, unless you fall all the way down, like I am, because I'm an idiot. So you can kind of flip around on the vines like you, uh, like, I think Donkey Kong Country, but I can't actually say for sure. I remember... I don't know. There's definitely vine climbing in some game I've seen before. Oh, and you can hit your head on that, apparently. Alright. So, these guys will try to run into you on these slopes. Uh, but you can eat them with peck, so no harm done. Now, if I could just remember how to do the super jump, I should be fine. Oh, and I lost Peck. Oh well, checkpoint. I'm just being really stupid right now with the controls. Alright, so you can go over there to the right and get a lot of stars, but I don't really care, and you'll see why in a sec here. So now we've reached a dead end, but hey, look, it's Don Jacoby. And I fell like an idiot. Come on. This is the thing. The super jump takes some time to get used to. So if you're not used to it, well, yeah. Whoop, I fell again. And this is the part I hate. I really ho was hoping I'd have Peck for this part here. But basically... Basically, you have all these cannons firing off. And basically, by jumping on the rope as I'm doing here, you basically stop Don Jacoby's ascent so that you can avoid them. So, jump on the little thing here, get an extra life from the chest, now this is very abusive here, because you can't lose this fight, ever. Because there is a life you, in that chest every time, because I hit the save point here. So as long as you keep getting that chest, you can try this next bit over and over. There's no penalty. Unfortunately, I don't have Peck, so I'm going to have to try to do this without dying. Let's press this button, enter the Tree Dome Fortress, and there she is. So you can't see it right now, but she's pressing that red button there. Now... As you can see, there's a green glove and a yellow glove sticking out of the walls here. If you press the corresponding color button, that glove punches out. So, as you can see, it's basically Glove Wars. So, my strategy is this. When she jumps on the green button, jump on the yellow button. And then jump back down to the red button. And then repeat. And it's a pretty simple s procedure, except I didn't jump. Why the hell did I not jump? I had a super jump prepped. Oh well, I get that life back, as I say, which is really the awesome thing. They just put a life there, like they expect you to die over and over on this. And reasonably I did, but the pattern is pretty simple once you get it down. She jumps for the... Whoa. Oh wait, can you duck under that? You can duck under that. One well, in any case, there's where the red goes. You're being a bitch. Oh, come on. She gets really fast after a while, as you can see there, so... Open that chest and get the life. There we go. But yeah, she does get really fast, so it does become a little bit of a bitch after a while. Just have to make sure you get these button presses right, and that you have your super jump properly set up. And there we go, we got her. Alright. 
Now hand over that rainbow crystal. Come on. Cough it up. Gonna cough it up. Come on. You gonna cough it up? What? Hey! Where are you going? Oh look, she's a flying squirrel now. Gotta go after her. What, you're not gonna jump, are you? We just jumped after her. This must be a 40-story drop or something. Oh well, I guess we can... The hell? What was that? Okay, well, we've been eaten. Hooray. We're now inside the belly of a worm. Alright, so we've got a pretty easy stage here. Nothing too hard, actually. It's pretty easy as long as you take it slow. This is actually true for the entire game. As long as you take it a little bit slow, because, you know, there's no time limit, you don't have to worry. So these acid drips will hurt you. Try to avoid those. We've got these ropes here. More acid drops. Eat the, that guy. Avoid the acid. Eat that guy. Avoid the acid. We're basically going through the bowels of this guy's belly. So climb the ropes. Avoid the sharp pointy teeth. Which I didn't avoid too well. Grab the rope! For some reason it's a little hard to grab the rope sometimes. But it's not that hard. Okay, so now I got Peck back, and we got Checkpoint. The only checkpoint in the entire level, because it's so short. Alright, so now we need to do some quick rope climbing here. Actually, let's just do this. You can actually just jump down this, and then move over to the side here. It's really easy. They expect you to climb down, but you can just jump down. But as you saw there, the wall was actually closing in behind me, so you gotta be a little fast on the rope otherwise. Oh, look at this. Catri's dead. Now, the thing is, in the Japanese version of this game, this would be a skeleton, and there'd be an acid drop coming from the ceiling here. They took it out in this version because I guess it was too morbid for the kids, but... I guess they're just trying to say, okay, she's just unconscious, she's not dead. But no, she's dead. This is supposed to be a skeleton, with an acid drip coming from the ceiling. But oh well, we get the, si the second rainbow crystal, so that's good. Eat that guy. And now we got a little bit left to go here. We got one last little bit of segment here. So climb the ropes and avoid the acid. Whoops. Okay, I didn't avoid the acid that well. Oh, well that was horrible. I didn't grab the rope. And now I have to do this whole thing again. Okay, fine. We'll just fall the whole way. Because we can. Now, we already got the crystal, so we don't have to worry about that. I say just jump over... I was holding B! I'm I'm guessing there's like a bit of a delay between when Artie actually... Um, uh, there's probably a little bit of a delay when Artie actually does the super jump after jump. Like, you have to be past a certain point after the top of his jump or something. I, I don't know. But it's always a little hard to pull off sometimes. And there's a little bit of that um, tricky momentum coming into play about... <sighs> Come on. I always, like, jump too far past the rope or something. Well, here we are. We made it to the top. How do we get out? Whoa! The hell was that? Oh, look! Don Jacoby saved us from the worm! By cutting its tail off! Well, there you go. Guess that's one way to get out. So now we have to go into a pyramid, huh? Well, certainly this can't go wrong at all. Okay, so we got these moving platforms here. We gotta duck under this bit here. Jump up here for an extra guy. So this is what I mean, the game is rather forgiving, and gives you like an extra life in every stage. So, if you die in the right spot, you could basically get extra lives over and over again, it's really ridiculous. Now you don't want to kill this guy, because he's basically the light source of the entire area. You kill him, this place gets dark. Really, really dark. 
In fact, I don't want to demonstrate how dark it gets. Duck under those spikes and ride this platform down. <laughs> 